To get there, you need buy-in from the marks. The marks, the dumb, the conned need to buy into you. They need to buy into your character. Okay, and yes, it is a character. Hulk Hogan is a character. All right, the real man is Terry Bollea. Hulk Hogan is a character, and it's a character he created for the marks to buy into. All right, and to be able to get big, he needs the marks to buy in. Okay, that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest thing for a wrestler. He needs buy-in on a big level from the marks. He needs to be a very good salesman and be able to sell with his charisma and all these things to get the marks to buy in, all right? The other thing that he needs is the boss's ear. And if you watch the shoot interviews, you'll hear that Hulk Hogan was one of, if not the best, backstage uh, politickers. He was the, he is the best at getting the boss's ear and building himself up and, and the few guys around him and holding the other younger uh, guys down, okay? Because there's only so many slots on the roster and there's only so many mainline events. And when you're a guy like Hulk Hogan or Kevin Nash and you get a percentage of each pay-per-view, you wanna make sure that you're in the pay-per-view and that you're winning and that you're beating somebody every week because you need to keep beating people to um, maintain and sustain your persona of the guy who's the, the alpha, the top dude, right? You need guys who are gonna just roll over for you. And a lot of that comes from being able to sell it to the boss that this is the best thing for business. Me going out, me Hulk Hogan going out and beating this other guy, beating him every Monday night is, is the best thing for our business, okay? Very important to understand. So, you need to be able to politic, you need to be able to get buy-in from the marks, you need to be able to ruthlessly hold down the competitors who are coming in there and trying to take your spot. Because everyone wants Hulk Hogan's spot or Macho Man or John Cena or any of these guys. So they need to be very smart and savvy um, in all the covert battles and have the right allies and hold down um, the people that are coming up and trying to take what's theirs. So this is the idea, okay? This is the idea. You've got all these guys with these covert battles and then you've got the overt battles for people that, that real people can see. And you've got the WWE Universe, which is all overt, and then you've got the backstage and the indie media shoot interviews, which is all covert. And what happens is you get these conflicting narratives, okay? So a lot of the times in wrestling, you'll see a narrative that was supposed to go on for six months, but it just gets cut off and then you never hear from that guy again. When I was younger, I used to watch it and be like, Mr. Perfect was talking all this shit one day and then he's just gone. And he had this whole feud going on with somebody else and then he's just gone one day. And it's like, you find out later, oh, he had a drug problem. He had to go to rehab for five months, but they just don't talk about it. So you have like, sometimes it'll be a continuous narrative that will go on for six months and will build up to a WrestleMania. And then you have the winner of that narrative and then the feud will be over. And it'll be that sort of um, really nice arc. And sometimes that arc will get pulled off in two weeks and you won't hear it again or it will be shifted into a different arc and a bunch of different guys will be brought in and it will be a bigger arc like the nwo when they went into wcw uh back in the early 2000s okay so the narrative is always changing always shifting sometimes it's continuous sometimes it's not sometimes it looks surreal sometimes it looks like complete bullshit and sometimes it looks like it's been done very well, okay? And, but you don't get the truth about that from the o over WWE. If you want the truth about that, you have to go to the indie alternative media, the shoot sites to see like, okay, why did this angle just disappear out of nowhere and now they're focusing on something else? And then the shoot site will tell you, okay, Mr. Perfect or whoever had a drug problem and, and he left and that's what happened. So that's what you need to understand about that narrative. And in the sense that there is no unity of the elite, okay? Now we're gonna bring this back into the political sphere. And you hear a lot of people talk about the Illuminati or whatever, and it's 300 years old and they're all working together and all come from the same families and they're all, this is not the reality, okay? The reality is there are multiple cliques of very powerful people backstage. We don't get to see the fights, but they are fighting, but it, it is not this, elite unity, okay? 
you're taking like the most ruthless, intelligent people and you're saying they're just going to agree with each other for 300 years and, and accept the positions. No, it's like Hulk Hogan, Macho Man, Kevin Nash, they all go out and put on a show for the marks, but backstage they're fighting for their little power base and to get more and to get one over on each other. Sometimes they're aligned with each other and they're like, I love this guy. And the, the next day they're fighting with him and they're aligned with someone else doing whatever's in their own self-interest. And, but all that fighting we can't see. Okay. And that's, that's what's going on with the politics. Okay, you've got the neocons, you've got the progressives, you've got the traditional cons, you've got the libertarians, you've got all these different camps. Then you've got all these other different power bases around the world, Catholic Church, um, Saudis, you know, all these different groups and power bases and lobbyists and, you know, all these different various facets. And they're all fighting for the biggest piece of the pie that they can get. And they have their cover, you know, they have their overt battles that we're able to see that gets through the filtering of the mainstream media. And then they have their covert battles that we can't see, that we can only peer at through the independent media. And even then, I'm not convinced that we know even, a f even if you're well researched on this stuff, you might even know five, ten percent of what's going on. Because, I mean, even with the independent media, we don't know how much of that's real information and how much of that is is part of the script. Um, so it's a very, very uh, similar thing to what's going on in WWE, okay? The actual fights are the ones that we can't see, all right? That's what's going on. We just see this scripted reality. And if you believe you're a mark, okay? You're either a smart mark or a dumb mark, all right? Now, the dumb mark is the person who's at the rally for the politician with their face painted in the fucking colors of their party, screaming and cheering. And, you know, when I saw um, Obama's first election, there were people in the street streaming like, why do you love Obama? And I remember one woman's like, we're not going to have to pay our mortgage anymore. He's going to fix everything. It's like, I mean, they, they are bought in and their marks on the dumb marks are marks on such a huge level and they're so bought in and any type of real talk or any type of um, criticism of their particular person will be met with like real aggression. Just like if you try and tell a grown man who's 40 years old who still believes that wrestling's real, like if you try and tell him and give him like logical explanations for why wrestling is scripted and not real, he will get very angry with you, okay? It's the same with someone who's hardcore a dumb mark who fully believes in the political game, okay? But then you also have the smart marks, okay? And this is, when you look at the political sites and you see these long fucking comments from these dudes, they are, and they're always talking about what we need to do. They are still bought into the fucking game. And they're still usually bought into one guy or, or one, one um, type of ism, right? Okay, they're bought into one type of ism. And there's so many different isms and micro-isms and they think, but they are still bought into the game of like, if we just get this one guy here, you know, that's what we need. This is what we need to do. This is how we need to come together. We need this guy or, or this guy's the right guy. We believe in him, all right? And they have these long comments arguing with each other all the time. And they're bought into it. They're just the smart ones, okay? There's the smart guys who understand wrestling is fake and they understand everything about wrestling, but they're still buying the pay-per-views. They're, they're still buying in. You're still buying in to the fucking spectacle that is pro wrestling and the spectacle that is politics. Politics is a fucking spectacle, okay? They might as well come out with entrance music and fireworks and a fucking steel chair and the whole fucking bit, all right? They might as well come out like Hulk Hogan, all right? Because it is the same game. It is the same game, all right? It's that scripted reality. It's the scripted reality by the predator class, by the slave, uh, by the master class, by the producer class, to the marks, to the consumers, to the slaves. Okay, that's it. That's how it goes. And I am speaking to you as part of that class. Okay, part of the producer class. I live off of people who buy into what I'm selling. The difference is the only reason I'm able to tell you guys this stuff is because my business is building producers. I'm building you up to be a producer. Otherwise, I would have to sell you. I could never I could never do this real talk. I would have to just sell you. I would have to keep selling the dream or selling you some type of scripted reality. 